Most coasters that you ride every day come from major manufacturers. These may be from companies like B&M, Mock Rides, Gerslauer, and many other reputable manufacturers. But some of the coasters out there are built and designed by the parks themselves. These are the small minority of coasters, but there's still quite a few out there. All I did to compile this list was just think of in-house coasters and write them up worst to best based on experience and reputation. Simple. Let's get right to the list. Number 10. Wild Beast at Canada's Wonderland Many people have the misconception that this ride is a PCC. This is not true. The ride was built and designed fully in-house when the park first opened to the public in 1989. This was one of the four coasters that opened with the park, along with another coaster on this list. As for the ride experience, it's not great. If you've ridden Grizzly at King's Dominion, you know what it is. Shallow drop, slow turn, crazy good airtime hill, slow turn, and then more hills and turns. Oh, and it's brutally rough the whole way through. Aside from that one really solid airtime hill, the rest of the ride's just kind of a throwaway. Number 9. Tornado at Adventureland This is one of the many rides on this list that I haven't ridden yet, but judging on layout and reputation, this seems like a good spot for it. Built in 1978, the ride stands 93 feet tall and has 2,800 feet of track. So the stats are similar to Wild Beast, just taller in height but shorter in length. Based on the POVs of the layout, the ride almost clones Hoosier Hurricane at Indiana Beach with its slow and tall hills and drops. It's a straight out and back with no helix or anything. Not to mention that this ride's apparently brutally rough too. Why do people even ride this thing? Outlaws in the same park. Just go ride that. Number 8. Mighty Canadian Mindbuster at Canada's Wonderland Built in 1989, open with the park, I'll save you the unnecessary details. This is the other large woody that opened with Wild Beast, and this one is a little better. The saving grace of this ride is the layout. The ride's arguably rougher and in worse shape than Wild Beast, but is a bit more enjoyable. It's a simple layout, being a straight out and back with a 450 degree helix at the end. Some of the hills out and back do have good airtime, but it's so rough that it feels more like laterals than negatives. The helix just makes me laugh because of how insanely loud it is and hearing my friends screaming next to me. The next few rides are a huge jump in quality though. Number 7. Rollercoaster at Lagoon This is a huge jump in quality from the previous three rides and is actually enjoyable for a change. The ride has been through a lot, being built in 1921 and is surviving a fire that knocked down part of the layout. Speaking of the layout, it's nothing special. It stands just 62 feet tall and is a double out and back. The good things about this ride are that A, it's remarkably smooth for being 100 years old, and B, it has really good trains. I personally hate the PTC train, so this thing having GCI Millennium Flyers is a very nice touch. It's more of a family coaster, having a small hate requirement, but it's still fun for enthusiasts, especially those nice airtime pops on the hills while sitting in the front or back. Number 6. Thunderbolt at Kennywood Another coaster nearing 100 years old, this one being 97. The ride had originally opened with a bit of a different layout, but was completely overhauled in 1967. The current version of the ride is still very solid however. The main selling point of this ride is the terrain aspect of course. The ride goes down between a valley, with its large drops, and in between has a double helix with sustained laterals. It's the best of the three Kennywood wooden coasters, even though the other ones are all very solid. This ride is also again, extremely smooth, probably smoother than roller coaster. Hopefully this thing stays around for good. Number 5. Twister at Knobles this ride is quite the cult following. It's one of the newer coasters on this list, being built in 1999. This is a very enjoyable coaster while still having a very weird and unique layout. It's a pure lateral and speed machine with a few airtime pops thrown into the 3,900 feet of track. The ride is an extremely weird start, having a small lift, a small drop, and then the big lift that goes into the rest of the layout. The ride's also pretty smooth for its age and still serves as a premier attraction at Knobles. This ride, however, is not the only in-house coaster there, with the other one being just a little more unique. Actually, the other coaster's right here. Number 4. Flying Turns also at Knobles. This is where I'll probably be flamed in the comments. I think that Flying Turns is a bit more of a noteworthy coaster than Twister. This ride has an extremely long history. The ride took nearly 7 years to fully construct and finally opened in 2013, making it the second newest coaster on the list. The ride is frankly quite mild, having 3 lift hills, maxing out at just 24 miles per hour, and having only 1300 feet of track. I think this deserves a high placement because of how much of an icon it is, not just to Knobles, but in the world. The ride is still super enjoyable nonetheless, feeling out of control and being one of the most purely fun coasters out there, despite its mod elements. Number 3. Cyclone at Luna Park This is by far the most famous and iconic roller coaster in all of North America, if not the world, located in Luna Park on Coney Island in New York. To be 100% honest, I think this coaster doesn't even offer a ride experience like even as close to as good as Twister, but its historical value is so significant that it warrants a high placement on the list. The ride isn't too intense, but it's still a very smooth experience. The ride also caused multiple parks to create replicas of this ride's compact layout. The best one of these is probably Viper at Six Flags Great America, which I believe did not belong on this list because of the cloned layout. 
The ride is so notorious and noteworthy that it deserves a top 3 placement easily. Number 2. Cannibal at Lagoon In terms of ride experience, this is definitely first, but in terms of notoriety and value, I think it's second. Cannibal is the most dramatically different coaster from all of these on the list. While all the other coasters are all old wooden coasters, aside from maybe flying turns, this is a state-of-the-art steel monster which previously held the record of the steepest drop in America, being sloped at 116 degrees, with just lap bars. The layout starts with a freaking elevator lift, which is super rare, then there's a blur of inversions, bank turns, and even an ejector dip before hitting the one-of-a-kind lagoon roll. This double inversion is literally only found on this coaster. This is literally an in-house Gerstlauer Eurofighter on copious amounts of drugs. This ride is absolutely wild. Number 1. Beast at Kings Island This is by far the best example of a homemade, in-house roller coaster. The Beast is the longest wooden coaster on earth, clearing the second place coaster, Voyage, by over 700 feet. The way that the Beast tracks and the fact that it's still going strong after 42 years of operation makes it my favorite in-house coaster in general. For the rest of this segment, I want to explain on why this ranks above Cannibal since I know I'll get some questions. To me, and lots of other people, Cannibal is actually the better coaster. The thing is, Cannibal feels similar to some coasters made by real, legit manufacturers. Cannibal feels similar to some Gerstlauer's, Zier's, and Intamins. The thing with the Beast is that it really doesn't feel like any other company, it feels like its own separate breed of coaster. It was designed by Charles Din, but it doesn't feel like a Din Corporation built coaster at all. It's too long and classic to feel like a CCI or a GCI, and it's too janky and weird to feel like a PTC. What I'm trying to say is that Cannibal does a better job thrilling guests, but Beast does a better job of feeling like a homemade coaster. But yeah, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the countdown. Let me know your opinions on these rides, especially the controversial top pick and flying turns. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the next video. Bye.